Peace be with you all. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, HRC Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zachua. Hope you all are enjoying the day and been enjoying the edification in these law classes. We touched on understanding that first commandment of having no other Allahayim before Ahaya, and hope it was edifying. And as we're building, that first commandment actually goes right into the understanding we needed to grasp the second commandment not to make any graven images or any likenesses. Because one of the easiest signs of putting other Allahayim before Ahaya our Allahayim is making unlawful images. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23 to 25, please? Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye you forget the covenant of Ahaya your Allahayim, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which Ahaya the Alahayim hath forbidden thee. For Ahaya the Alahayim is a consuming fire, even a jealous Allah. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Ahia the Alahayim to provoke him to anger. He is provoked to anger by the making of unlawful images for good reason, as the making of idols, or graven images, or molten images, or unclean simulacra, which are pictures, is by malignant spirits assisting and seducing us to do it, so that the evil spirits can dwell in the images. Can you read Jubilees chapter 12, verse 4 and 5, please? And they made for themselves molten images, and they worship each the idol. And the molten image which they had made for themselves, and they began to make graven images and unclean Sumatra, and malignant spirits assisted and seduced them into committing transgression and uncleanness. And the Prince Mastema exerted himself to do all this. So... You have, first you see, they made molten images, that was against the law. And they worshipped the idol, that was against the law. Then, they also began to make graven images, that's another type that's against the law. And also, unclean simulacra, that by definition is pictures. And notice, even though they didn't worship the pictures, that was still a transgression. And it was malignant spirits assisting and seducing into committing these transgression and uncleannesses with the Prince Matsuma exerting himself to do all this. All right. Now, this is why making unlawful images and desiring them or worshiping them is wrong because it's evil spirits at work in the midst of it all. Can you read and jump in if you have anything, please? Mm hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4 through 6, please. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with diverse colors, the painter's fruitless labor. That's paintings. Okay. Continue, please. The sight whereof enticeth fools to lust after it. And so they desire the form of a dead image that hath no breath. Both they that make them, and they that desire them, and they that worship them, are lovers of evil things, and are worthy to have such things to trust upon. Hopefully that helps understand it's not just the worshiping of images, but the making of them, and the desire for them. That's also causing us to be lovers of evil things, understanding that it's actual evil spirits at work in the making of them and the enticement of desiring them. You can see this today in social media. It's common for people to take pictures of themselves. These are the same dead images because pictures have no life. These dead images entice us to lust and understanding the spirits at work in it all. Now, the devil exerted himself to do all this, to make a man commit transgression. Hence, it's evil in the sight of the Lord to make graven images 
or the likeness of creatures, which are paintings or pictures, which are unclean simulacra, because they are the representation of a creature or person. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25, please? When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Ahiah the Elohim, to provoke him to anger. Hopefully you understand from what we discussed before. It corrupts us because it's a malignant spirit that inspired us to do it. And it's provoking Elohim to anger because we're going away from him. We're putting another Elohim before him. And we're also setting a stumbling block for others with the images for them to desire them and lust after them or like them. Now, the unlawful images, whether graven images or likeness of anything, we know is made by assistance of the evil spirits. And these evil spirits, they help make them so that evil spirits can dwell in them. And it's actually hidden from men. It's not a common thing known that images actually have spirits in them. Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 77, please? And when the devil has said these things, and even more, the apostle said, Yahweh commands you and your son through me not to enter any more into the habitation of men. But go now and depart and dwell far apart from the territory of men. And the devil said to him, You have punished us harshly with your commandment. But what are you going to do about the others that are hidden from you? These people of India have created all types of images, rejoicing them far more than what you do. Many of these people do mostly worship and perform their own will, sacrificing to these images, and bringing them gifts of food by libations and by wine, water, and offering with oblations. It's interesting. It's not without coincidence, as you talk about all the time, how Allah doesn't, his scriptures, they aren't what they are for no reason. Mm -hmm. India is well known for images whether pictures, statues, and different things from ancient time. And notice the demon said, what about others that are hidden from you? Because these people have created all types of images. It's demons that are unseen because it's not known. And they say many of these people do worship and perform their own will. So even... The, the way, the lifestyle, living according to an old will, there's a demon, there's a spirit there that's leading to do that and to sacrifice to the images and to do um, drink offerings and libations. So, so understand when you see the, the Feast of the Gentiles, like we talked about in the last lesson, these things, there are spirits at work in it all. Nothing is just being done by coincidence. And these devils were hidden in the images people created. And there is a judgment for the pictures, the graven images, the molten images, and idols along with the person that made them. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 10, please? For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. So we see how Allah protected us by the simple law of thou shalt not make thee any graven image or likeness of anything <laughs> that keeps us from that punishment. Notice the idol itself will be punished as well because an evil spirit dwells there. Also, the person that made the image will be punished as well because he transgressed the law that commanded not to make a graven image or likeness of anything. Peter saw the souls of these devils that dwell in unlawful images will be punished as well as the unlawful images too. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter chapter 6, please? Uriel, the angel of Elohim, shall bring forth the souls of those sinners who perished in the flood, and of all that dwell in all idols, in every molten image, in every object of love, and in pictures, and of those that dwelt on all hills, and in stones by the wayside, whom men call Elohim, for they shall burn with them in everlasting fire, and after that all them with their dwelling places are destroyed, they shall be punished eternally. So you see, the images, the objects of love, 
the molten images, the graven images, they're going to be destroyed. And then those spirits that dwelt in them, they're going to be punished eternally. Hopefully this helps understand that it's not a common thing that's going on in society where pictures are, are common in society, graven images, statues, molten images, objects of love where they teach us to have an object of affection for one another. These are actually places where spirits dwell in the stones and in the wayside. That's where you may hear of in the scriptures where it says the children of Israel, they will go worship in the high places or be sacrificing under every green tree. People that is common in witchcraft today, they go off in the woods or in the bushes to go sacrifice. And in sub-Saharan Africa, they're still going off into the mountains to offer sacrifices. Yeah, they are. These things are actually being done to spirits, right? It's not just common, okay? Well, it is common in the world, but it's, it's, it's something behind it. It's spiritual warfare, okay? So you have idols, molten images, unclean simulacra, which are pictures, are dwelling places of the souls of devils. So it is unlawful for us to even paint an image in respect of the law, commanding not to make likenesses in Exodus 20 verse 4. So as not to corrupt ourselves by having a spirit entice us to make a similitude of any figure, nor create a dwelling place for devils to hide in. All right, can you read 4th Maccabees chapter 17 verse 7? This was where, if you heard about the story where the woman and her seven sons, they all got sacked, uh, murdered by King Antiochus. And it was a grievous scene. It was a grievous event. But hear what this author says about portrayal of the scene. Please, Zach. 4th Maccabees chapter 17 verse 7. And had it been lawful for us to paint, as might some artist, the tale of thy piety, would not the specters have shuddered at the mother of seven sons suffering for righteousness' sake, multitudinous tortures, even unto death? So his comments showed it was unlawful for us to paint people, even to show the traumatic experience of what the mother and her children went through because it would be making a similitude of male and female to help understand it's not lawful to make images of living creatures, even if we aren't worshiping them. Knowing that evil spirits inspire the making of images and evil spirits dwell in the images that are made, it helps understand when Allah was destroying the Canaanites and their deities, he required the pictures and statues to be destroyed so as to rid the land of all the evil spirits there. It's, it's funny now put it, connected it with um, Axatamas because the demon said, what about those that are hidden from you, right? Because mm -hmm. man, we didn't know about Allah <laughs> He's Allah He knew like, yeah, destroy everything. Get right. all those spirits out of there. <laughs> Uh, Numbers 33, verse 51 and 52, please. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their Alahims and destroy the names of them out of that place. That was Deuteronomy 12 and 3. And it was good that you read it together because it helps put in perspective what's being done by getting rid of their high places, knowing that there are demons in the wayside, off in the bushes, up in the hills, right. and then destroying the molten images and all the pictures. You're actually getting the names of those demons all out of that place. All right. With this understanding that destroying the images is a part of destroying the names of idols out of a place, we can see it's because the idols dwell in the images. So with understanding this, why is it important to avoid unlawful images? Of course, we know keeping the law first and foremost, but why else? Making unlawful images was an occasion to deceive the whole world, prophesied by Solomon to help us understand to avoid them. Can we read Wisdom of Solomon, 
chapter 14, verse 12, then verse 15 to 21, and verse 27. Of course, you can go read the whole chapter at your leisure. Right. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 15. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as the Elohim, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. We Go see ahead. here, thank you. Mm -hmm. We learned about how getting in our feelings opens us up to the devil. His mourning for his son led him to do what he did. And we understand evil spirits got involved. And this here is not uncommon today, though people may not. There are some people that literally worship their ancestors and offer sacrifices to their ancestors. So it does happen. But to help understand on a more common level, People have family members, loved ones that we have pictures of that are objects of love for us. And in our mourning for them, we hold on to these images. Just as this man, the image of his son was his way of honoring his son. When some honor their family with, well, they believe it's an honor for their family to hold on to these pictures. But it's something we just didn't get the proper understanding of what these images are doing to further uh expound on what you're saying you see since the since the idol entered into him he also with that dead image he also created ceremonies and sacrifices to go along with it to show that the the idol had more influence it was more than just just honoring his his son it was bringing people unto the worship of that idol that was controlling him or that it was influencing him. It brought out its own doctrine through him. Right. To, to get men to worship him. Yeah. There's a verse in chapter 14 that talks about how these idols entered into the world for the vain glory of men. To understand, like what Zach is saying. They literally are seeking to be worshipped, just as we learned the devil and his angels thought man should worship him from the beginning. Hence, these idols, they're all on the same page of deceiving us to get us to worship them. It's actually the wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 14. It says, for by the vainglory of men, they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. So... It's about getting us to honor and worship them and serve them. Okay. Uh, continue, please. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Thus in process of time, an unholy custom grown strong was kept as a law. Engraven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. There you have modern holidays around the world. Customs that kept going on. And became law. It was an unholy custom to honor the image of people and commandments to worship graven images became a law over time of continuing the unholy custom. Hence today, images of people are honored around the world and also creatures are honored all around the world, not knowing the custom is unholy. Continue, please. This one right here is very interesting because what they're actually going into they're actually going into the, the birth of what we know as Jesus. Yeah. So yes. it's interesting how they use that graven image for that holiday of what they call Christmas. Yeah. I mean, it literally lines up with the scriptures and exactly what it's saying. And it was easy to do because Jache didn't make any graven images. Right. And they had the, the technology during that time. Because even Caesar had his incision on the coins. They mm -hmm. could make paintings. They had all the tools to make any type of moat in a graven image. Mm -hmm. But there was none because he actually was keeping the law. And that's further proof in the earth that Christ kept the law of not making graven images. You know, so. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, continue in verse 17, please. Whom oh, men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present. And it's by no coincidence talking about the image of Jesus, which is truly the image of Caesar Borgia. That image is around the world. You have huge statues of, I think it's like Brazil or somewhere. They have the great statue in the on a mountain in the city. Like it's yeah. common. It's very common to find that image everywhere, a counterfeit. It's just interesting the sacrifices and the customs that come with it, you know. So it's it is a whole nother religion. They've right. put aside the commandments that Allah commanded and his feasts and festivals, but now you have Lent, Christmas. And the different things, they have Saints Day and things like that that they honor instead of Allah Hayyam, what he desired. Right? Oh, what's the Masalim 14 and 18? Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. So they worked hard. The the major painters at that time worked hard to make a very good looking picture to help get the ignorant given over to more superstition all right continue please but he pure venture willing to please one in authority forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion all right so seeking to please men you see the evil spirits at work in this all right continue please and so the multitude, the Lord, by the grace of the work, took him now for Elohim, which a little before was but honored as a man. Right. See how things, we don't know the history of things, and then over time, things change, becomes the norm. Continue, please. And this was an occasion to deceive the world, for men serving either calamity or tyranny, did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunable name. So there we see. It was an occasion to deceive. Through tyranny, being oppressed by kings and colonizers, who were taught to ascribe the incommunicable name of the Alahayim unto stones and stocks. Okay. Continue verse 27, please. And that's interesting because that goes into all religions. Yeah. He did say to see the whole world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that's every religion. Every right. religion has some type of stone or stock that they're claiming to be Allah Right. So, or some image. There's some yeah. image. Like every every religion has an image or a stone or a stock that goes with it. Right. Which are stocks. The images are stocks. So it's it just, it's interesting. It's foretelling of what was to come. Right. Continue verse 27 when you're ready. For well, the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Thus it was prophesied of old. And we see it prominent in the world as images of men, creatures, stones, stocks, and standing images are worshipped around the world. All this is preparing the world for accepting the image of Satan when the false prophet comes. So you can see the end goal of this. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4, and then verse 9 to 11, please. All right. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. This angel, Belier, will come in the form of that king, and with him will come all the powers of this world, and they will obey him in every wish. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 9. And the majority of those who have associated together to receive the beloved, he will turn aside after him. And the power of his miracles will be in every city and district, and he will set up his image before him in every city. The acceptance of unlawful images will help make this easy to receive, having his image in every city. 
And that acceptance of unlawful images will also open many to the acceptance of making an image to the beast as well. Can you read Revelation chapter 13, verse 14 and 15, please? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they shall make an image to the beast, which had the womb by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It's going to be some real deal sorcery. It's going to deceive the world. Hopefully these events to come help understand why believers should avoid unlawful images in respect of the law and the events to come, knowing that the devil and his spirits are at work behind it. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, please? And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto Elohim and unto the angel that interceded for you. For he is a mediator between Elohim and man. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. Therefore is the enemy eager to destroy all that call upon the Lord. For he knoweth that upon the day on which Israel shall repent, the kingdom of the enemy shall be brought to an end. For the very angel of peace shall strengthen Israel, that it fall not into the extremity of evil. And it shall be in the time of the lawlessness of Israel, that the Lord will not depart from them, but will transform them into a nation that doeth his will. For none of the angels will be equal unto him, and his name shall be in every place in Israel and among the Gentiles. That's a key difference between Christ and the devil. In the end of this world, the devil through the false prophet will have his image in every city, and the beast will have his image as well, both transgressing the law, while Christ will have his name amongst all in his kingdom, keeping the law. Continue, please. Keep therefore yourselves, my children, from every evil work. And cast away wrath and all lying, and love truth and long suffering. With all this, let's keep from evil, and let us keep the simplicity of the law. Can you read Exodus 20 and 4, please? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. And the reason being, Deuteronomy 4, verse 16 to 18. Least ye corrupt yourselves, and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. There you have it. We have to keep that law so as not to corrupt ourselves by letting any spirit mislead us to make the image and put another Allahayim before our Allahayim. We have this law to keep us from idols in our thoughts, not to make images lest we corrupt ourselves by them not having Allahayim in all our thoughts to transgress that first commandment, listening to seducing spirits that will lead us to making unlawful images and transgressing the second command as well. First John 5 and 21, please. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's that one piece that just keeps us in the law altogether. Keep from idols. Don't let them lead us astray in any facet. All right. Hopefully this is edifying. And there is more edification on this subject. Please visit the website. There's going to be a link in the description box. The website tab is called Our Pictures Unlawful. It's a lot of info. It's essential. We touch on understanding what transpired with Solomon and the images in the um, court and his house and understanding the law with toys, movies, videos, clothing, clothing, and um, a lot of different questions that will come up. And remember, images are images. They're dead images. A live video, we're alive. You're seeing us in real life. 
This is not against the law. Okay. Anything else, Brother Zachwa? I don't think we're good. All right. Oh. Praise Allah. Oh. Just make sure you check out the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. I know Brother Casa mentioned it, but I want to make sure they said the website. <laughs> I, sure, I sure did it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Praise Allah. I am. Catch you all on the next law class. Peace be with you all. All right. Shalom, everyone. HRC, 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 HRC,